the librarians, since their lesson with us on Wednesday, have been showing me what it takes for us to influence our timeline, to get our timeline where we want and need it to be. The end result is like already determined, but what it takes to get there. And they were showing me, it's a little bit like, um, oh, that Stephen King story that James Franco acted in the uh, made for TV movie of where he goes through time and tries to stop the assassination of John F. Kennedy. And he can't because he's one person going up against this huge force of time that if you want to change a little thing like you say something by accident that people look at you like you're so weird and you want to change that that's easy or if you want to change in time something that only affected you and only you are aware of you know if you know how to change time obviously then that's easy but the more energy a timeline has the more energy is required to change it. Just as if you want to push a boulder out of a road, you know, one person against a big boulder is not going to be particularly effective unless you get like enough tools or a crane or whatever, or a lot of people. It's just about energy matching energy to have an effect. Otherwise, the other energy will actually eat your energy and then be even more powerful. Um, so they were, they've been like showing me lessons on what it really takes for this to happen. Not like how I can do it, but the, the laws of physics behind altering time streams. And, um, and so they keep showing me like where we are now and deep in the future when earth is like really, you know, awesome, like this behind me. There's a lot less people alive. So to get from here to there, there's obviously going to be some rough stuff. But one thing they showed me is as many lessons as we've learned these past few months and this past year, humans are being tenacious with like our obtuseness. We will not evolve and you can't force us to. We will continue to cause harm and destruction and we will fight against anyone trying to save us. And they showed me how Earth is inevitably in the future going to be, the frequency on our planet is going to change and portals are going to open. Beings from other dimensions, other parts of our universe, other frequencies are going to be able to come here and be physical. If we're at a very high frequency of love and kindness and empathy, as we're supposed to be getting to, then we're going to have a frequency that nothing below that frequency can come here. Just like when you radiate personally with a very high devout frequency and someone, you know, kind of toxic comes near you, if you're like flowing, with this, they have the choice of either absorbing your frequency to get near you, or they have to put up a shield to protect their toxicity or they go away, but they don't really impact you. They can't really get close to you. Um, so if our planet has raised our frequency, then wonderful divine, high frequency collectives and beings and all will come here. It'll be a renaissance for us all. But if we're still squabbling in the mud and the blood as we are now, you know, then we're going to be attracting, we're going to be such a low frequency that we're going to be the place where like unpleasant beings will come to. And they said, eventually, they believe we will get to where we need to be, but it might extend it even further. 
so that we have a period of time where Earth's frequency has shifted, portals are opening up, and what's coming through, beings that like to eat humans and enslave humans and, you know, um, and ironically, what I see is these beings creating like a paradise for Earth, but not nice to humans. And it's sort of our choice in the here and now and over the next few decades, what sort of future for us we're going to have because earth is going forward no matter what. So the last few days, they've been teaching me these lessons and showing me these sites. And it's um, motivating, <laughs> motivating. There's um, two... TV show slash movie books that already talk about this. The first really? one, the first one was uh, Twilight Zone to serve man. Oh yeah. And they brought, they brought peace. They brought Eden. They stopped war and they were feeding. Um, the second one they just redid was Stephen King's called the stand. Oh, I, I haven't seen that. I've seen like advertisements for it, but I don't, I didn't know what it was about. Yeah, no, it's um, it's really funny because he wrote the book 70s and it became a mini series in the 80s because it had Molly Ringwald before she left uh, uh, Hollywood. So that's yeah. how old. And then they just recently made a remake. Um, but anyways, um, what happens was is they called uh, they had this super flu and they called it Captain Trips. And basically it was this flu that just took over your body and it made the neck swell up and you just, you died on your own, you fixation basically. But it was fast, fast, fast. It went around the globe. But there were some people that were immune. And then you had, you know, evil and you had good. And huh. uh, it's totally worth watching, watch it. Um, the new mm -hmm. one has, you know, it's a little more special effects kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the one made in the eighties um, with Gary Sinise, Molly Ringwald. Yeah. yeah. Um, they didn't have a lot of special effects then, so they had to do more acting. So, mm. you know, I mean, so yeah. um, I'm more preferable to that one than the new one, but the <laughs> new one's all like glitzy, but yeah. Um, Isn't it interesting how like the artists and the, you know, the literarians get these visions of the future yeah. before the common people? But yeah, I mean, I've been seeing this and you can always tell the difference between a vision and a dream or a fantasy. Like it's, a, it's as much a difference as looking around the room and seeing the room versus closing my eyes and daydreaming about being on a beach right now. Yes. It's, there's a, a difference and you can tell when it's reality the way you remember it, the senses, the lessons, the emotions, they're, they're unique and separate from each other. Yep. Um, and I, you know, by now I have enough experience with the librarians. I know when they're teaching me something just to teach me and when they're teaching me something for a purpose. So I'm not quite sure yet what the purpose for this will be, except I think to start educating, warning, you know, letting people know what's out there. But traditionally, when they have me educate, warn people, you know, people get really mad at me <laughs> because we want all of this. We want the beautiful, pleasant reality without doing the work, you know, and we don't want someone going, oh, if you don't do the work, it's doom and gloom. But that's exactly what I have to do because people have to get moving. We have to get off our butts and start creating a planet where we're not, in essence, parasites on our planet, but we are part, instead we need to be part of the global frequency of thriving. You know, like you and I were just talking about minimum wage earlier and how 
no one should be earning so little money that they have to work 90 hours a week in order to scrape by, especially if everyone in their family has to work, you know, 60, 90 hours a week for them to scrape by living in a small, overcrowded home. You know, people should not have to be that way. So long as we have a society that thinks that's okay, that means we have a society that condones mistreatment of people for our very nature of a daily existence. I don't think it's so much our culture. I think it's global. I was just reading an article about uh, Doha uh, Q-A-T-A-R, Qatar, mm -hmm. um, that, think. yeah, they're, they're doing the um, World Cup in 2022. Mm -hmm. They started building this thing about nine years ago with immigrant um, labor. And they've had a lot of deaths because unless you're born, because I had someone who actually lived there, unless you're born there or, you know, for the families and stuff, they beat you in the streets and the cops look at you like, well, you deserved it. But if you're born yeah. there, it's totally different. So mm -hmm. it's not just our culture. It's a global thing. Well, yeah, I was speaking as global culture, actually, because um, the librarian showed me again and again and again until humanity comes together as a compassionate collective of individuals. We are on the path to doom ourselves. I mean, that's basically it. And um, the Akashic librarians were hoping that when the COVID came up, not that anyone caused the COVID, it is obviously you know, the natural effect of our doing terrible things to the planet. There's, this has been proven only, you know, uh, conspiracy theory naysayers are clinging to any other theory. But um, the librarians were hoping that we would take this situation as a lesson to go from, grow from, that if everyone came together and all the global leaders came together and said, let's, you know, come up with a cure. Let's come up with a way to survive. Let's get through this together. They would become so used to working together that they'd say, you know what, now let's deal with poverty together. Let's deal with, you know, all the global immigrants that are like dying in boats and, you know, in deserts. Let's start changing everything. And then we'll see, wait a minute, we have like a few people with so many resources that they're wasting them and so many people who need resources who aren't getting them. Let's, we actually have everything we need. Let's come together and bring it together so that we can be a thriving planet. But, you know, we didn't do that. So uh, they're hoping... <laughs> It wasn't, it wasn't for a lack of trying. It was just certain people in certain oh, positions. There was definitely lack of trying. Look at our government. Our government was the opposite of trying. No, but I mean, but there, other countries were like, hey, let's do this. Let's pull together. Yeah. I mean, it has to be the whole planet. Correct. But I mean, they were trying to do it, but there were certain entities that were like, no, you know, so. It wasn't and, entities. It was human beings. Like, we can't blame this on anyone but. Oh, our, no, no, no. I just, our, I meant that, you know, people. like our government yeah. and um, Korea's government, you know, that kind of thing. I just, I meant entities as, as a government, as a country, not, not yeah. non-human. I just, it meant, was, the entity was human arrogance and greed for power and not even real power, but <laughs> they're in their face. I'm going to go golfing with my arrogant buddies power, but Anyway, that now I'm getting onto a political tangent. Right. Yeah. <laughs> anyone who watches me knows where I stand on politics. <laughs> I am opposed to greed and corruption on all levels. That does not make me a Democrat or a Republican or any other party. It makes me a human being who expects better of all of us than what any of us are doing. You know, except like the Dalai Lama and his crowd, <laughs> you know, there's some that are pretty awesome, but in general, we, we have to step up and the visions that they are showing me show that 
we're on a very dark path that is going to harm us first and foremost. Whether you think of it by global climate change, you know, now they're saying, um, like I was reading today about how the water level rising, that, you know, and how many houses are going to be permanently underground, underwater on the, you know, seaside and how many roads are going to literally, there's no way to keep infrastructure alive, you know, or stable. Um, like, what are you going to do with a road that it's constantly underwater? How are you going to maintain that asphalt was not designed for that? You know, funny you should bring that up. I was talking with my brother um, the other day and we kind of got on this. And because um, he was telling me that some of the plants in um, Japan are starting to bloom. And I'm like, well, you know, the earth knows when things, you know, should start to go. Sometimes they get tricked. And then he goes, yeah, except for the part um, that every ice age begins with a lot of ice melting at the polar caps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just like, oh, yeah, well, that's true. So, you know, it's exactly. just, and that's where we're going. Yeah, there's no question of that. No question at all. You know, uh, every geologist can tell you what pattern we're on. And, you know, like in um, Miami, the city of Miami, I think I've mentioned to you before, the raising sea level is putting more weight on the water, which is putting more weight on the shoreline because water is very heavy. Mm -hmm. And the city was designed, the city of Miami was designed for there to be a certain amount of pressure on the water around it. The sea level putting so much weight is pushing down on the ground, which is pushing the uh, groundwater beneath the city further in, which is causing it to geyser up through the manholes. So the city of Miami is getting flooding, not like manholes, like geysering, not from the seawater, but from the fresh groundwater, which then means it messes with their plumbing and their water pressure. And like, and that's just one tiny detail. So whether one believes that we are on a divine path and I'm receiving messages. I know a lot of other people are receiving messages about the imperative nature, you know, how imperative it is that we change our path. Sometimes even just a subtle shift can make a whole difference or whether you are hard science, it, it all leads to the same place and we we've got to get our act together but I'll tell you it freaked me out this morning when I was in meditation and they were showing me this future where these like giants were coming through and just like eating people and like these like I mean they just looked dark and demonic and the crazy thing is they weren't like bad they were exactly what they're meant to be they were no more bad than you know uh, a cat is bad for eating a mouse or a bear is bad for you know raiding a beehive they were not bad from our perspective they were bad they didn't harm the planet we just were are their prey and they saw that our planet was overrun so they were like, they were calling the herd. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, you really should watch to serve man. These oh, guys. Oh, no, I know that one. Oh, I also I know not, the, yeah. the Simpsons parody of it as well. Oh, I didn't know. I'll have to watch that. I haven't seen that one. I think it was from their first Halloween. I don't know. It was early. It was long, long ago on one of their Halloween specials. I'll YouTube it. I'm sure I'll find it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now it's time for me to stop this conversation because you and I have work to do. So I'm yep. going <laughs> to. <Yep. laughs>